So today we're gonna to finish up chapter six, section five, and today we're gonna to learn how to graph the tangent. So yesterday we saw the graph of cosecant, the graph of secant, and then we did two examples. Now for the tangent curve, the tangent graph is gonna take on the shape of the x cubed graph. So if there's no amplitude, it'll take on the shape that looks like this. If there is an amplitude and if it's negative, the negative tangent curve will take on <coughs> a negative x cubed graph and it would go in this direction. So it'd be like a reflection. So just like before, we can tie this to our unit circle quadrant angles, so zero and two pi. Remember that uses the order pair one zero. Pi over two would use zero one. Pi uses negative one zero. And then three pi over two would use the zero negative one. So for example, if I ask you to calculate the tangent of pi, remember tangent is y over x, we're using this order pair for pi, zero over negative one, and it simplifies to zero. And if you look up at your graph, we're gonna be looking to see if the order pair pi comma zero was graphed. And if we come up here, yes it was. And then if we were to graph let's say tangent of pi over two, then that order pair, remember, is gonna be the zero one, and again, y over x, we get one over zero, which is undefined. So at pi over two, it's gonna be an asymptote, just like we saw yesterday. And notice right here, at pi over two, we've got an asymptote. So this is how you could actually do it by using your unit circle and getting those quadrant angles. However, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at the equation and then we're gonna find the period length, um, if it's a speed change, and then find one fourth, one half, three fourths, and then the whole cycle length. So normally what we've seen so far up to this point, Normally, the cycle for sine and cosine and secant and cosecant was two pi. Now my period length is gonna be in pi. The tangent graphs, I'm not gonna give you a phase shift. It's just gonna be a speed change or it'll have an amplitude or maybe a shift up and down vertically, but no horizontal for tangent. So it's nice and simple. So let's go ahead and just take a look. Now I'm gonna add a page and I'm gonna show you how to graph this thing that's pictured here. But I'm only gonna do one cycle. This one actually has a bunch of different cycles here because normally one cycle for the tangent graph, this would just be one, it goes from up to pi. So then that would be a cycle and it's got a bunch here. And that's how the web assign's gonna be. In your notes, or I'm sorry, in your work, I only wanna see two cycles of pi of tangent, sorry. Let me add a, a slide here to show you what I would look for in your work. But again, the multiple choice answers may have more. So let's say we wanted to graph y equals tangent x. So what we're gonna do here, same thing as before, the number in front of x, this is your b value. So my b is one. So the period length for tangent instead of two pi, is gonna be pi. I'm gonna divide that by the V value. So my cycle is completed in pi. So then now I'm gonna do one fourth, one half, three fourths. And then finally, four over four, which is just the period length. So this becomes pi over four, pi over two, 3 pi over 4. So now let me show you how easy this is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and put these key points along my x-axis. So again, this is what I want to see in your work tonight when you're doing this homework that's due the Monday we come back. 
<clears throat> so let me go ahead and put these along the x-axis. Pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi, negative pi over four, negative pi over two, negative three pi over four, and then just negative pi. So no, no phase shifts, no horizontal shifts left or right. Um, so again, it'll just be like a reflection once you find the one fourth, one half, three fourths, four over four. Now, I'm also gonna add in if there's an amplitude, this one doesn't have it, so I'm just gonna put one and negative one. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna box this in. So I'm gonna go right through the very last left hand point and all the way over to here to the far right and make a box. Now, at the one half calculation, this is always going to be an asymptote. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in an asymptote right here through pi over two and negative pi over two. Remember the tangent graph is taking on the X cubed graph. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our first point at zero, zero. And then at the very first angle we calculated, everybody good? Nice and easy. Let's try one with the speed change. Okay, so these are the instructions for graphing. But all you need to do is remember that this is the amplitude, this is your B value, and instead of two pi, we're gonna take pi divided by that B, so it's gonna be pi divided by four. This one's gonna go faster, okay? It's actually gonna be completed now instead of pi, it's gonna be completed in pi over four. Remember, pi is, if you think about it in degrees, is 180, and it takes 180 degrees to complete a cycle of tangent, but now we're gonna be doing it in 45. So it's a lot faster. But again, I still gotta do the calculations. So now, pi over four times 1 fourth, pi over four times 1 half, pi over four times 3 fourths, pi over four, four over four. So this becomes pi over 16, pi over eight, three pi over 16, and then this is just pi over four. Now, because they're gonna have a lot of different cycles graphed in the multiple choice, you may not see these numbers that you calculated. I still wanna see this in your work. What you can look for is that you have that X cubed shape at this point. And I'm gonna show you an example of this with somebody's web assign. Um, but let me go ahead and see what, show you what I wanna see in your work and what I wanna see on the test. So in your work for notability, what we're gonna do here is put these key points along the X axis and then reverse it, negative pi over 16, negative pi over eight, negative three pi over 16, and then negative pi over four. I'm gonna add in my amplitude, two and negative two. I'm gonna box it in. Also remember at the one half calculation, this is gonna be an asymptote. So let me box it in first. So right here at this very last left angle that you calculated, this negative pi over four is where you're drawing your box. And then over here to the pi over four, draw in your asymptote at the half calculation, which is the pi over eight and the negative pi over eight. And then now you're gonna start your graph. How do you know which ones are the so what we've got here is this is one cycle of pi and it's the middle of the box. 
So if you wanted to think of this as two boxes and it's the middle of it, or just remember it's the halfway calculation. So whatever you got when you multiply it by one half, that's always an asymptote. So then now I'm gonna put a point here at zero, zero. And then at this very first um, angle measure, the pi over 16, the order pair is gonna be pi over 16 comma two up to the asymptote. And then, and then over here, and then add the, the wiggle to it. Don't just make a diagonal line like that. It takes on the X cubed graph. It's got a bend to it. Then over here at the edges of your box, at negative pi over four and pi over four, it's also touching the X axis. And then over here, and we could add the point here and then connect it and add the little bend. On WebAssign, it's gonna show this also. And then same thing over here. And then same thing down here. So it's gonna have multiple cycles of pi of tangent, not pi of tangent graphed. Okay, so this one has a negative amplitude and it does have a speed change. Notice it's one half. So this means it's gonna go slower. So the negative three is my amplitude. This is my B value. So I'm taking pi and dividing it by one half. Keep change, flip it. And my period length is now two pi. It's going slower. So again, break that into quarters. So one fourth, one half. And again, remember at the one half, that'll be an uh, asymptote. So the full cycle will be completed in two pi. So at two pi, we should be seeing something like this. If you're looking for the answer choice um, and it doesn't have all of your little calculations. So once I multiply this, the twos will simplify and this just becomes pi over two. Over here, the two simplify and it's just pi. Over here, the two and the four simplify, three pi over two, and then the two pi. So remember, at this calculation, at the half, that's an asymptote. So let me go ahead and set up my x and y axis here, add in the amplitude. Uh, let me come down here to the bottom. So I'm gonna put in pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. Over here, same thing, but negative. And then negative two pi. And then add in the amplitude, so positive three here, negative three here. Let's box it in. So over here at the negative two pi, all the way over, make the box and go into the two pi. Add in your asymptote at the halfway, which was that pi and negative pi. Now, because the amplitude is negative, we're gonna, it's like the reflection of the x cubed graph. So it's the negative x cubed graph. So zero, zero at the negative pi over two, it goes this way now. So now it takes on this shape, the negative x cubed graph. And that at the edge of your boxes, put your points. And again, same thing. Uh, let me add the point. And then here it would be out of it. But on WebAssign, you're gonna see all of that. And then it's going up into my work. And again, for your tests and your homework, you don't have to show me what's outside of the box, but WebAssign will have it there. And it'll probably have even more red lines than what I have.